Steam locomotives were life for the Britain's railways, carrying passengers and goods for over a century. Out of the thousands of locomotives produced in industrial Britain, two steam giants have endured the golden age of steam. To the very end of steam itself. This is The Surviving Princesses. In the 1930s, steam locomotives were mass-produced by the thousands. With many unique designs catered for specific purposes. The Big Four ran the network lines across Britain. With increased goods and passengers, more powerful engines were needed. Two designs by a man called William A. Stanier would change motive, power and speed for steam locomotives in Britain. The first of these designs were the Princess Royal class. Soon after William Stanier arrived, he needed some much more powerful locomotives. In 1933, two of the locomotives of this class were initially built. The rest of the class were later built in 1935 and their numbers ran from uh, 6200 to 6212. So I think that's 13 of those locomotives uh, were produced. Uh, all but one of them were steam, but the other one remarkably was a turbomotive, and that was a steam turbine locomotive. But they were all named after the princesses, royal princesses, uh, and they were working uh, by 1935, all of them, and they were doing a magnificent job hauling the trains, um, which were basically coming from London, Euston, up to Glasgow, very high speed, and later on they used to work across to Liverpool. But the first thing was to fill the gap where they hadn't got a loco of that power. And certain expresses had famous names, and the one that springs to mind is the Red Rose, which was a, a, a common uh, sort of train from Liverpool to London. These engines were just the starting point. Within the next two years since creating the Princess Royals, Stanier came up with an improved and more powerful version, the Princess Coronation class. The Princess Coronations came after that. Uh, Stanier was away in India when they designed and built the Princess Royals. When he came back, there were a few changes he wanted to make. What positives came out of the design was a, there were a definite improvement on the Princess Royals, and secondly, even more of them were wanted. Uh, but the most important thing, I suppose, was the decision by the LMS uh, management, but, uh, because the LNER had got streamlined locomotives running up and down their East Coast main line, uh, he said we must have streamlined trains on the LMS on the West Coast main line. And the, on the eastern region, they ran from King's Cross to, to Edinburgh, whereas on the west coast, as I mentioned, they, they run from Euston to Glasgow. So it was generally called the Great Race to the North. Um, and Mallard holds the, the world steam record still to this day because of its sloping front and its streamlined appearance. It was able to hit 126 miles an hour, uh, even in those days. Um, on the west coast, um, we couldn't really go for the record um, because of the bends and the hills, whereas on the east coast they've got long straight stretches. And so they were all designed with streamlined casing, the initial ones were anyway. And so uh, that was how they came, and they came out and they were very well uh, a Ad adapted for the job they were doing and they were absolutely thrilled to bits and they did high speed runs and then the non-streamlined locomotives which were like the Duchess of Sutherland uh, they started to be built um, in 1938 um, and uh, they were named largely after cities so they were a long, long time building them all but they did a magnificent job on that particular route with the age of steam coming to an end, 
many of these locomotives were cut up and scrapped. However, the Princess Royal Class Number 6203, Princess Margaret Rose, and the Princess Coronation Class Number 6233, Duchess of Sutherland, were saved by holiday homeowner and entrepreneur Billy Butlin. Well, we've got Billy Butlin uh, a lot to thank for, really. He was opening holiday camps, and each of his holiday camps had a children's playground, and he thought it would be marvellous to have a locomotive in the playground that the children could climb all over and have fun with. I know that Princess Margaret Rose was put on display at Patheli at the Billy Butlin, the Butlin's holiday camp at Patheli. Um, Duchess of Sutherland went to uh, Air in Scotland. And that moved there in uh, October 1964. Um, afterwards, Alan Bloom of Bressingham Steam Museum decided he would do some um, restoration because they were, they were windswept and, and weather, weather worn and Billy Butlin got a bit fed up with it all, he said oh, it's too expensive. So um, Alan Bloom got hold of uh, uh, Duchess of Sutherland for Bressingham Steam Museum um, and it was moved to his Bressingham Gardens because he, he, he got a small bit of track, it was only 300 yards long, but he actually got steam locomotives of various kinds and he thought the Duchess of Sutherland would be absolutely magnificent. With the Duchess now being at Bressingham, Princess Margaret Rose was loaned to the Midland Railway Centre in Butterley in 1975 and was later brought for £60,000. With Princess Margaret Rose, um, when that came here, I think we can cut this short and say it was a major overhaul. Everything had to be done to it, which means a complete strip down, parts renewed, parts repaired, etc., to get it to mainline standard. Within her restoration, the PRCLT was formed, where they later brought the Duchess of Sutherland in 1996. The Bressingham trustees decided that they, uh, they wanted to get rid of Duchess of Sutherland, and so they made a decision, and we went in for buying it. I got a Heritage Lottery Fund grant, which is quite considerable, to both pay for it and have it restored to mainline running order. And so we bought it to the West Shed and put it alongside 6203 on the 15th of June 1996. Similarly with the Duchess as well, um, that had to, to uh, have a major overhaul uh, to get that to, to mainline standard. Well, um, 6233 Duchess of Sutherland was completely done here except for the boiler which had to go away and be repaired. Um, we, we don't do everything at the West Shed but we've got a very good workshop which was part of the deal. We originally just had this shed to have locos in but then I got a Heritage Lottery Fund grant of quite a, a large amount of money um, to extend it and put a new workshop at the back there. And so it could all be done here um, and uh, it, um, it was restored, uh, completed in uh, 1998 and finally finished in March 2000 and then the loco moved under its own steam for the first time, 18th of January 2001. So it was quite a long time coming but it, all the work was done here except for the boiler and one or two other specialist bits. And such was the case in 2002 actually, the Duchess um, was uh, uh, hauled the Royal Train with the Queen and the Duke on board um, in 2002 and again in 2005 when uh, it took Prince Charles over the Settle and Carlisle route. Uh, so a magnificent sort of spectacle for anyone to have seen that and it was the first time in 35 years that a, a steam engine had actually hauled the Royal Train. And the people who saw it were absolutely amazed because it brought back memories of their childhood and their grandparents would bring their grandchildren and they would stand them alongside and say, look, this is what Grandpa used to see when he was young. I mean, this is gran it's grandparents bringing children on when it's holiday time in here that makes this such an attractive place for them. So it was then. Well, the, our youngsters have never seen a steam engine on the main line. Um, so that's a thrill for them if, if the parents take them to a point somewhere where they can see uh, a steam engine go racing through the platform or maybe even join us on one of our tours and travel behind uh, a steam engine. Uh, and then you've got the people 
um, <clears throat> who maybe used to work on the railway and it's very nostalgic isn't it they can sort of see these engines again and see them working on the main line trust itself princess royal class loco trust believes like many other uh, private railway companies that are now operating that it's necessary to keep these uh, remnants of the steam age uh, because it was a marvelous period of our history and to just have them all cut up and and, and uh, for scrap, which so many of them were done. Uh, the National Railway Museum had a policy of, of maintaining and buying uh, some preserved locos, but not enough in our opinion. And we LMS fanatics said, well, you've got a gap there. You haven't got a Princess Coronation, so we ought to have one of them. So we've got one of them. And likewise with 6203 Princess Margaret Rose. Currently, Princess Margaret Rose remains in the confines of West Shed. The last time she ran under her own steam was in 1996 and would take a lot of time, effort and money to ever get her running again. However, a lot has been done already. With the help of enthusiasts and volunteers, the PRCLT have been able to restore multiple engines and rolling stock for over 24 years. These dedicated people have been able to keep the Duchess of Sutherland running along the British rails for years. But she is just one of the few locomotives that have this privilege. And maybe, just maybe one day, Princess Margaret Rose can also return and run on the line once again.